Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today, we revisit the spec right at the Saxon Club, and I prepare my marinated goat cheese appetizer. We also pay a visit to Warren's Packard Museum. But first, goat milk products straight from the source. This is Carrie Miller. She and her husband, Scott, are the owners of Miller Micro Farms. And the micro farm is actually goats. Yeah. And I find this a very interesting story, how necessity brought you into the soap and lotion business using goat's milk as the main ingredient. Now, the name of the goats are? Oberhasleys. Oberhasleys, and they are a very specialized goat. They're from Sweden. Yep. And they're pretty rare. Yes, around you know. here, still pretty rare. And the reason you started buying these goats was for a personal reason. Uh, yeah, digestive issues with lactose and milk. Um, and we were told that maybe the possibility of some goat milk. so did a lot of research and got some goats. So, it, and it doesn't aggravate your stomach at all. You have no, the, none of the issues as when you were drinking cow's milk. Correct. And it tastes, you say? It, one of the specific reasons we chose the Oberhasleys is it tastes like cow's milk. It doesn't have what they consider that goatiness to it. Okay, yeah. So. And so you can make cheeses with it. I Absolutely. mean, for personal use. Yep. This is not for, you know, uh, you don't have a dairy here where you're selling No, it. and it's a little creamier, so it makes great cream soups in the winter. So that was always a good kick too. And then you had so much goat's milk yeah. that you did not know what to do with it. So then you start looking into products. Yes. What? And, and I mean, the lotions, everything it smells and feels so good. I love the texture of the goat milk lotion. And what kind of research did you do to learn about that? Honestly, a lot. We did a lot of reading. We did a lot of testing and trying. It took us about a year to get a formula that we both agreed on. Uh-huh. Um, it was a long process. Now, you don't do anything to the goat's milk when you add it to the soaps. Nope. And nor to the lotions. Uh, to the lotion, we um, pasteurize our milk for the lotions. Okay. And then you really look for the high level of essential oils. Yes. And what are the other binders in, in, in your lotion? Um, in our lotions, we use coconut oil, sweet almond oil, um, avocado oil, and then shea butter. And I think that's about it, emulsifying wax. I mean, and I, I just think it's really, really clever. And they don't have anything that is No unnatural. chemicals. No chemicals. No chemicals. And here's another great thing that I really love about these products. I was like, oh, these are such cute bags. Is this how you sell your soap? Now tell me about this bag and how it's used. Okay, these are called muslin bags. And you can leave the soap right in them, use them to exfoliate, and then you can actually hang them right up and your soap will dry quicker and it'll last twice as long because of it being a soft soap compared to a hard process soap. And I, isn't that clever? So then you don't need the, the extra sponge, you don't need the extra washcloth, and you just use that and it makes it last that much longer. Yeah, and one other great thing with our soap, you can use it for your hair, you can use it on your face, and you can use it to shave. Well, you have a lovely complexion, and your <laughs> hair is lovely, and is this all due to... That's all we use. The Miller Micro yep. Farm The only products. choice we make is <laughs> who gets to pick out the next bar scent. And then what are some of your favorite scents that you, I, I see you have pumpkin getting ready to go. because Yeah, the falls fall. are upon us. Um, it's a little too hot to even think about those ones right now. Um, I would say my favorite is the oatmeal, milk, and honey. And that's probably one of our best sellers. And then um, the lemongrass. Oh, I yeah. absolutely love the lemongrass. I mean, the cucumber melon and the mango papaya, they're all great. But if I had to pick one, it'd probably be the lemongrass for me. And most of your sales are really done word of mouth through your website. Yes. Because you're out here in Kidsman, and let me tell you, you're we're in the middle far of off the beaten path for me. <laughs> I'm driving and driving. I didn't think I'd ever get here. 
But so, and, and that is going really well, huh? Your it website. is. Um, we're actually starting to see people from further and further away ordering. Um, we have a new gentleman that's ordering from our men's line about every three weeks from Johnstown, PA. Well, that's great. And then are you in any of the local stores? Um, we are in Miller's Country Store in Cockerton, Pennsylvania. And then there is a small yoga studio in Hermitage that carries very select products. Hi there. So Mabel needs milk. Are you kidding me? They're that obedient? I've got to tell you, the Millers, really, you guys are perfect farmers. You respect your animals. They are so, it's so clean here. You can't even believe you're standing in a barn. And the chickens, and I mean, I just fall, those goats are beautiful. Yeah. You really love them, don't you? Yes, I do. I mean, you guys are really, really responsible farmers. And I mean, it's really nice to see. And then you make those beautiful products. And then this one has a little cross beak and he lays blue and green eggs. Scissor beak. I gotta take a picture of you. And really the best way to get these products. <laughs> oh, that's right. Listen to cross beak. Freaked me out, man. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't so happy with the way Scott was holding him. Go to MillerMicroFarm.com and you're gonna find all those products. You guys, this has been awesome. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Well, Rude is the dude. Rudy <laughs> is one of the new owners here at the Magic Tree and it's still the same great local flavor yes. and I love yes. Love your new menu items. Yes, well, you know what, Casey, we feature a lot of still the farm to table, local grass fed beef on our burgers, house made bun um, for a little entree dinner. Uh, we have a Nashville chicken sandwich with uh, homemade grits, local honey, house pancakes, and for a little lighter side too, we got a fresh salad for you uh, featuring some avocado, fresh cheese, fresh cut citrus fruit. Uh, so it's a little lighter version for you. So we kind of hit every angle. Uh, of your palate here with entrees, burgers, that and salads. That is right. I'm telling you, and you know what? Farm to table, it extends to the beers too. You got birdfish, noble yes. creature. I mean, they support local. Come on out to the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Mayflower Wilm is your full service independent insurance agency. We work with several insurance companies to offer you choices for your insurance needs. We'll find the right product at the right price. Personal, business, farm, life, trust Mayflower Woolham. You focus on what's important, we'll take care of the details. Mayflower Woolham, close by with three locations to serve you. Five Buck Burger Mondays at Sadie's Place, inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. Is it time to update your color style? RNS Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop RNS Paint. Here at the upstairs, we cater to everyone. When you come through the door, I treat you as though you're my friend. So there's all kinds of options here at the upstairs. There's something on that menu for everyone. Great food, friendly service, very clean restaurant. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of good restaurants in our community. So I always feel honored when someone comes here. I want everybody coming through that door to leave here with a good experience. Well, today I have got an excellent appetizer that is so easy, so delicious, and it's gonna look like you went through all kind of trouble but it is delicious. I love goat cheese. I love the creaminess of it, the earthy flavor, and you know, you just don't wanna serve a log of goat cheese. And this is softened goat cheese with a flavorful infused 
oil with a lot of different spices, of course garlic, and then with a toasted baguette, when you go to your next party or you have people over, this is so easy to make and it will wow them. For this recipe, you'll need eight ounces of goat cheese, one teaspoon of whole allspice, one teaspoon of coriander seeds, one half teaspoon of anise seeds, four strips of lemon zest, two cinnamon sticks, five garlic cloves chopped, one half teaspoon of crushed red pepper, one half cup of extra virgin olive oil, and one baguette sliced. Well, the first thing I do is I broke up an eight ounce log of goat cheese. And I just put it in little single serving ball sizes and put them in a shallow dish. I'm just using a really pretty, you know, glass pie plate. But if you have anything just shallow enough and around this size, that will work perfectly. So we'll let this sit at room temperature. Then I slice the baguette, about quarter, half inch. And I did not treat this with oil or anything. I have a preheated oven of 425, and I'm gonna put them in there to toast eight to 10 minutes. Just keep an eye on it so it won't burn. So I'll stick that in the oven. Before we go to the stove to warm the infused oil, I wanna release the flavors of the coriander seeds and the allspice. So what I'm going to do, if you have a, mortar pestle, that's the perfect time to use it. But you can also use the flat side of your chef's knife and just bear down and break these up. So now what I'll do is add all of this into the pan. Half cup of oil, extra virgin olive oil because you are going to be eating it, the chopped garlic cloves, these cinnamon sticks, that adds a nice warmth. Got to have the heat with the crushed red pepper, the lime zest, and last but not least, the anise. Now I will pick these up with the knife, transfer them. So now what we're going to do is head over to the stove, put this on medium. We don't want it to burn. We're just going to cook it until the garlic is golden. Keep an eye on this. I do have this on medium low because you do not want burnt garlic. That will ruin this dish. And you don't want it to get too gold. You want it to be very, very light brown. This is about the golden color I'm talking about because at this point it can turn very quickly in the oil. And you just want to make sure it's soft if you get a piece of the garlic. So you can see the oil is still hot and it continues to cook even when I take it off of the stove. And now we just pour all of this goodness over the cheese. Now the oil has been evenly distributed over the goat cheese and just sprinkle it with a little bit of sea salt and then let it sit for about a half hour so everything goes to room temperature. And don't forget, to keep an eye on the stove with these baguettes. I toasted mine for almost 10 minutes, but my mom's is much more efficient here at the Casey Malone kitchen. And these were ready to go in about six minutes. Creamy, flavorful, really unexpected flavors with the cinnamon and the allspice. Mm, that is really good. That is a flavorful appetizer. <laughs> now, what do I recommend? How about a Spanish rosé? This is a Caravacas from the Rioja region. It's made with Tempranillo and with the Grenache grapes. Really pretty salmon color. Mm. Refreshing, really cuts through the goat cheese and these heavy spices. I'm telling you, you will be asked to make this again and again. And look how easy it is. Go to my website, caseymaloneshow.com, and you will get the recipe for my marinated goat cheese. Enjoy. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for 30 years. And my message has never changed. If you're involved in an automobile accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative. 
dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may encounter. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court. And remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. Shop Ruli Brothers, home of the Famous Evening Express. I am blessed with a wonderful husband. He stuck with me through thick and thin, and he's a fantastic father. So when he needed long-term care, not just any place would do, we did our research. Everyone said, trust the name you know. Briarfield. With all those locations, there's always one close. That made it easy for me and the kids to visit more often Briarfield. Trust the name you know, Briarfield. Proudly serving the Valley for over 20 years. We're here at the Packard Automobile Museum, yes. Warren, Ohio. Executive Director is Mary Ann Porinchak. And I don't think people realize the history of the Packard automobile. I think being from the Mahoning Valley, we take it for granted, but this car, the whole line, it was really trailblazing in the it automobile was. industry. It was. They were on the cutting edge of the automobile industry. They had some innovations. In fact, we have a long list in the other room of Packard firsts. They were the first to put a wheel on the car in this country, <laughs> and they took a lot of abuse from the Horseless Carriage Magazine over that type of thing. They were the also- The Horseless Carriage Magazine. I mean, right. that just goes to show you the age. Yes. And then in doing some research, I didn't realize 1899 was when this company, and when for four years it was here. So the oldest one is at Lehigh University, which was the alma mater of- J.W. Packard. And this is the other oldest- The second oldest car in existence, yes. And I mean, what are some of the features that really stand out compared to the other ones of this era? Well, for one thing, these patent leather wheel wells here, these these fenders, these are patent leather. And That's all this, not metal. That is not metal, that is patent leather. I mean, Oriental rugs. Yes. I, I, mm -hmm. And how did you, where, where did this come from? How did you, mean, you how did we how end did up you with acquire this, this? Yes. Terry Martin, who was, a, basically the driving force behind this museum movement back in the, he started in the 70s collecting Packard stuff. This is his car, was his car, and he sold it to a collector, and it's been with us ever since. Now this is the Model F from uh, 1903. Correct. Is this the car that you were talking about that had the first steering wheel? No, they actually put a steering wheel on right after the 1900, but this is one. This one actually has a tilt wheel, <laughs> oddly enough. Which, <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, we think that today's cars came up with the first idea of a tilt wheel, but if you slide that cylinder up, that wheel tilts back so the driver can get behind it. Now every year you have a motorcycle exhibit? Yes. It, it has a different theme every year, but 
This is our 18th annual motorcycle exhibit and we featured the motor this year. And it's here through May. The motor. The motor. I mean, but the Indian, now how do you acquire all these things for your displays? Well, we have a, a very, very good motorcycle exhibit committee. Okay. I call this the people's exhibit because this exhibit is created by motorcycle enthusiasts for motorcycle enthusiasts. And the whole goal is to feature motorcycle history and to illustrate how important it is to our culture and to transportation history as a whole. So it does have a purpose for being here. And this space, do you? this is available if people wanted to rent the actual. Oh, absolutely. This makes a wonderful space for a party. We've had uh, corporate cocktail parties, we've had fundraisers, we've had weddings, we've had wedding receptions. Instead of people sitting around at a, a banquet hall staring at the mirrors around the perimeter, why not look they at get Packard's? to get up and look at cars. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. yeah, and it's an icebreaker, so the corporate events here go really well because you bring a bunch of people in that really aren't familiar with, them, with each other from mm -hmm. across the country, and here they find common ground. Even if you're not a car person per se, there's always, there's family history here, there's Packard Electric history, and everybody knows somebody who is at Packard Electric. Exactly, I mean, that's, yes. that is our valley, Packard Electric, and, and that all started with the individuals that we represent here and their history and their legacy, so. Um, even if you think you're not a car person or a motorcycle person, I'm sure that you will find something here that interests you. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Open the Jewel Box, the Courthouse Inn, organic vegetarian comfort food, handcrafted cocktails, fine wine and beer, fresh baked cakes and pies. Recharge your senses at the Courthouse Spa. Dazzling dining, artfully prepared, locally sourced ingredients, spa services, the Courthouse Inn feels like a world away, just down the road in historic Lisbon, Ohio. RNS Paint is a locally owned paint store and not a paint department. Inspiration comes easy when choosing exciting Benjamin Moore colors and finish. Over 3,400 vibrant and durable colors are yours at RNS Paint. It's time to get real about getting engaged. Real experts you can count on. Real pricing and financing for your budget. And really one-of-a-kind engagement rings. That are unique as she is. Get real, get Kamara. Get real, get Kamara. In the Cool Creek Plaza in Canfield. Four for five till six. Happy hour at Sadie's Place inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. At Woolley Brothers, the family is in the store. Meats, deli, produce, even the checkout. We work hard to ensure that you get the best products at a personal shopping experience. At Woolley Brothers Markets, our customers are our top priority. Our family is in the store. Every year, a spec fry is held at the Youngstown Saxon Club. Thick slabs of bacon over an open fire and all the fixins. What's not to love? So this is where it all begins. You start at the buffet line. Now here they actually have the raw speck, the raw bacon, right here. So we'll pick some slices, and then all the fixins are here also. There's different kinds of bread. Of course, there's all the sandwich toppings. Red Eye, how long have you been a member here at the Saxon Club? 63 years. And how many spec fries have you been attending? I can't remember. <laughs> now they've always got you on the fire duty. I, I enjoy the fire. And you do an excellent job. Now what are you what are you what are you burning this year? Well, we've got some maple and cherry wood. No oak this year. Now why do you think that the maple and cherry is best for frying the bacon? Because there's not the too much smoke. Make that fire come to the bacon because of the grease. So it's it, right now, like the way it is here. Yes, that's nice. You're up high. You're there. You're gonna persuade the fire over. So now we're just gonna have to stand here and see. There's a little bit of a flame, 
But actually, it's more the indirect heat, and we'll see how it goes. All right, we have toasted bread. Now, I'm going to put some tomatoes on the sandwich. I am a fan of the Limburger. I know a lot of people might pinch their nose at it, but I like it. So I've got two slices of Limburger, and I like my bacon right on top of the Limburger so it melts. All right, so I'll put it on while it's really hot. I love this pizza like that. All right. Best BLT in the world. And that one. Then some lettuce. What about your onion? And grilled onion right there. Look how soft and nice. Beautiful. That is one heck of an Agwood Bumstead sandwich. All right, smush it down. Let's see how we did. Absolutely delicious. Look at that. Limburger is not an overpowering cheese. It smells stronger than it actually. This is delicious. Annual event, I will never miss it. So Harm, could you could you sum up this whole spec fry for me in one word? Today, today this year, this spec fry. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.